Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. We can see the US market sold off in the past trading session. But globally, there was some green around, around the globe, especially in Poland. Go Poland! India and Japan did very well as well. And Mexico just rocketing it in. Brazil was having fun. New Zealand and Australia were throwing a Halloween party. But China, Russia and the US and a bit of Canada, they all got pretty scared. I would love to thank everybody who wished a congratulations on episode 700. Wow, what an accomplishment we've made together. I'm so very appreciative of everybody inside our global family. And I have so much gratitude that each and every day I can just share my knowledge with such an incredible group of people. And to all the people who wished Kate a uh, a very big congratulations as well. That's just so beautiful of you all. Kate is my rock. And she really loves it when she sees that too. So thank you so much everyone. We always have such incredibly insightful comments. Please have a look through the comments. You won't find scammers there. We're very, very tough on scammers. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram. And I won't reach out directly and contact you through something like, Hey, talk to me on WhatsApp. Which, that would be pretty hard because I don't have WhatsApp. And it's just wonderful to see people who have been on the sidelines just a little bit quiet commenting again. It's just beautiful. And I just want to call out a special thanks to Bildi. Bildi was the first comment on the first video. You rock my friend. We have such an incredible global KS family. And it's just awesome how we've all grown together over these past 700 YouTube videos. I'm just so appreciative for each and every member of our global family. Thank you so much to everybody. And when I give you a heart and a like, that just means I think you're awesome. And I wish I had more time to go through all of these. Thanks again, everyone. I'd like to also thank our Twitter family. Noah reached out and said, Ken, what's the secret of doing 700 episodes? And it was a really, really good question. Thanks, Noah. And I basically said, it's if you're sick, you're exhausted. Just don't take a day off and give 200% every single time you turn up, no matter what. Don't take a holiday. Keep on going. If you're getting married, keep doing a video. If it's Easter, keep doing a video. If it's Christmas, do a video. If it's your birthday, do a video. If you're on holiday, do a video. And today is actually a public holiday where I live. If you're sick, if you're exhausted, it doesn't matter. Just keep on grinding away. And of course, you'll find times that it's really, really hard to keep certain things up. But that's when it actually counts. Thanks so much, Noah, for your really insightful question. I thought we'd have a bit of fun in this particular video and just look at some news headlines. Inside the masterclass, I teach and share a lot of insight that I gained as a lecturer in first and second year statistics for many, many years. The concept is how to actually analyze where price action is going. And it could be very different from where other people tell you it is going. So let's get started with some news. It's going to be really fun. For new investors and traders in crypto, it can get really confusing when you read the news headlines. For example, Bitcoin price struggles at 21k as traders says the top is in for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And on the same day, unrealized losses and profits signal ongoing accumulation, which is buying of Bitcoin price. And why stop there? Bitcoin double bottom excites bulls as NVT signal predicts major move. And which direction is that major move? It's to the upside. And let's go one better. Bitcoin price sees double top before FOMC meeting. And where is this double top occurring? It's occurring on the four hour chart, supposedly. Compounding things, two metrics signal the $1 trillion crypto market cap support won't likely hold. And what are some people expecting? And I'm not subscribing to this. The concept of a big sell-off 
Well, we do have the Armageddon line and we need to be aware of that, but this potential price action is quite unlikely. If we get a pushdown like this, a reversal like this is unlikely because there would be a lot of people shaken out of the market. Sometimes sharp angles do not reverse. And let's have a look at this. What is this person saying here? They're saying that we've got a big increase in this purple area. And what happened when we got big increases in this purple area? We were in bear markets. And what are they also saying? Not much. They're basically saying there's no conclusion at this particular point of time. As a former lecturer in first and second year statistics, I'm quite amazed how people look at particular charts and create stories around them rather than actually looking at what the data is telling them. One thing that I would note from a statistical perspective, meaningful comparisons are really, really important. You can see this ramping up in this purple area. The ramping up went much longer. These two are not comparative. And what about the third area? It's not even in the chart. So we can only make a meaningful comparison from this area. And that is not how statistics are done. What they're actually trying to say is, is the rate as the rate of change starts to lower out and it starts to curl over, that coincides with the bottom of the bear market. That's what they're trying to say. But the bottom of the bear market is back here. It's not at the peak. So just really, really be aware of how people interpret statistics. They may not be doing it statistically. And I'm not saying these people are trying to mislead anyone. I don't believe that's the case. It's just that when I was lecturing first and second year statistics, I used to give my students snippets out of the news all the time and say, analyze this. What story is it telling you? And is it statistically probable? That's what I look at. If you're going, tell, going to tell a story, put in the beginning so that we would need to see this side of the price action, the middle and the end, and also your conclusion. It's important to note the distinction between trading and investing. When you're a trader, you need very, very sharp and active and precise signals. Getting a signal that is not precise will not help you. And what you do statistically is you look at outliers. For example, when we had the C19 sell-off and the US liquidity crisis, Bitcoin and crypto just melted down. And we would expect to see large movements in these particular indicators. If they don't show a large movement, they may not be that much of use to a trader because a trader is looking to see where the markets are turning. That's not to mean that we don't discount what these indicators can tell us. Every piece of knowledge is a good piece of knowledge. But for example, if we were going to see more downtrend in the particular price of crypto, wouldn't this be falling over right now? And one thing, when you understand how to analyze something statistically, and I teach this inside the masterclass, not with maths and formulas, but just with common sense and just showing you how actually things do work in practice, you would be able to look at any particular chart, doesn't matter what they call it, and see if there is a trading signal there or not. And sometimes no real association exists between different variables. You would think that there is an association here. By the way, these people need to put their Bitcoin chart on log. But from a trading perspective, this cannot be used to time market turning points. Why is that? Because it's all going down whilst the market just rallied up. We can see this particular area of price. What was this indicator in the back doing? Don't worry about what it does and what it means. Just look if it's associated or not first. This is kind of the acid test. Okay, so what was happening here? It was coming up. Oh, okay, so every time it comes up, it's the, hang on a second, this red line is coming down. Why is it coming down? It should be going up. You get the idea. You'll find that statistically, some measures are better than others. And I believe relative unrealized loss is actually a really good one because it's deeply psychological. And one thing we do in crypto technical analysis is that we make sure we look across not only the crypto market, but all the markets. 
It's really interesting that when you look at certain charts, it just looks like a little blip in price, doesn't it? It was a rip your face off, just plummeting in price. Just beware, these log charts, they're important to actually normalize Bitcoin's price action because it's an exponential asset class. But when things come down, they really come down. That may not look like much, but it was shocking. These three charts I really like. Looking at net unrealized profit and loss, Nupal, is something we used to do all the time. But the problem is, it is really, really slow to change. And what we can see is capitulation has been occurring in terms of the fear that's in the market and the relative losses. What basically happens at a particular point in time, there's nobody left to sell. And that means the price can only go up from that point. One thing that I would always advise you of, get the knowledge that's required to know how to read the charts. It's incredibly important. People will have stories and they'll tell you stories. And that story may be correct and it may be not correct. The key is you need to independently assess it yourself. And I spend a lot of time inside the masterclass giving you those skills, transferring those skills to you. When we look at the crypto market, it's important to understand what price is actually telling us. So what is price telling us now? This is global crypto market cap and we can see that 1.007 trillion dollar mark. This is a really important resistance line. And this resistance line is derived from the CTKS method. What has actually happened here? Price came up to try to get over the $1 trillion mark. This is all of crypto. This is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, AVAX, Matic, everything. Tens of thousands of projects. And there was a lower support line in here as well at $987.98 billion. Now, what did we actually see? In this particular case, we couldn't get up to the trillion dollar mark and we lost the 987 and we've been coming down. The sellers have been defending this level very, very intensely and we've dropped down even more. There is a short term level of support playing out at around just a little bit below where we're trading now at 961 billion. We're currently trading at 966. We would anticipate a technical bounce around this particular area. For example, around the 955 mark. So we could see prices come back up to seek to challenge this $1 trillion level. We must take note that the FOMC meeting, the Fed meeting, to adjust the federal funds rate is coming up on Wednesday, the 2nd of November. One week ago, the probability of a 75 basis point increase was 95.5%. It's now a mere 87.8%. Well, it's certainly come down a little and the potential probability of a 50 basis point increase in the federal funds rate is now 12.2%. A week ago, it was 4.5%. So the concept is that the most likely thing that the Fed will do at the FOMC meeting is to increase the federal funds rate by 75 basis points. And this has been the expectation for quite some time. In all likelihood, the market has priced this in. For example, if the predominant probability was a 50 basis point increase and all of a sudden we got a shock that it was 87.8% going to a 75 basis point, but it just happened yesterday, that would be different. That would throw the market into a shock. But the market's been widely anticipating a 75 basis point increase. Will it be a good thing or a bad thing? We have to look at the numbers. We know the crypto cannot escape the stock market's gravity. And when we look at the NASDAQ, that's that blue line. And the S&P 500, that's the white line. Look at how closely they're correlating in with the directional movement or directional correlation of total crypto market cap. This means that we've seen a retracement in the major indices as well as crypto. We know that no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity and Bitcoin is currently trading at 20,411. We've seen the two key marks that we wanted Bitcoin to get above, the 20,777 and 20,588 mark. 
Bitcoin is currently below those. So what does this mean? Does it mean we're selling off and going lower? Not quite so fast. We need to stack a couple of probabilities before we can look into that. But we do know it's in negative area. This is why a couple of days ago I put these red areas in for you so that you could independently assess where price was going. One thing to bear in mind is on Tuesday the 8th of November the US midterm elections are occurring. When we look at Bitcoin on a daily basis, we can see that there was an enormous push up and we know what was actually underneath these spikes. That was that level of rejection, those two very strong smart money sell levels. And in fact, the selling has occurred as we would anticipate. Now we're doing a bit of an undercut here. So we're under negative price momentum and we often look at Max Payne to give us some kind of idea as to what options holders think that price could go to. So yesterday, Max Payne of Bitcoin on the 4th of November was 20,000 with 606.85 million in options expiration. What is it today? The max pain level is still 20,000, but there's more option holders getting involved. There's now 618.28 million in total option expirations. When we look on a weekly basis, we can see that Bitcoin has in fact overcome a level of steep resistance and it's moved up support. Does it mean it continues to go up? Well, we'll need to keep our eyes on the price and be prepared for any eventuality. But so far, so good. Just to clarify, this support level on the weekly basis form around this particular low part. This is supporting Bitcoin's upward price momentum. We can see that there's no real double top occurring. Many people will look at EMAs and SMAs, exponential moving averages and simple moving av averages or arithmetic moving averages. Exponential moving averages are better for an exponential market. But when we look at the EMA, the exponential moving average for the 100 period, and that's a 100 day EMA, we can see that it's forming a level of once support. But the real interesting thing is the real resistances are up here at 987 and at 1 trillion. If you were actually basing everything off the 100 EMA, you probably end up on the wrong side of the trade and also on the wrong side of the percentage. That's why I don't use them. I did 30 years ago when I was entering financial markets, but I wouldn't even be bothered looking at them right now. And also one thing to bear in mind, smart money usually uses these indicators against the retail herd and that's pretty nasty. So you're better off not using them in the first place. Typically smart money only looks at an indicator to figure out what the rest of the market is looking at and the rest of the market is typically incorrect. Another thing to be aware of, and this is just something that I've encountered over the many decades I've been in markets. When you see people in the news talking about certain things, they generally talk about these things because that's reflecting current price action. But do you see a clear double top in Bitcoin? Please let me know in the comments. And with Stanfield levels, you'll actually get X-ray vision on what the market is actually doing based on all periods and all price history. And those current Stanfield levels are at, for example, Bitcoin is currently trading at 20,465. One SL is at 20,588. The other is at 20,777. When we get above 20,777, we're going to see some potential fireworks. The next level above that is a light one at 21,714. And above that, they're also light. We could see some really, really interesting things happening. Only real resistance starts to come into play at 25,713. 
So let's also go the other way because the other way is incredibly important as well. You always want to do your three-dimensional risk management. Be prepared for whatever way price goes. Don't be caught off guard. We can see a smart money support level or a buy level at 20,208, one at 19,986, another one at 19,641. I hope this helps you. Understanding where the key levels of institutional buy and sell pressure are inside the market is literally a game changer. And that's why I suggest every single day you do your daily three-dimensional risk management. And that's through the Borsog code. And I have a whole episode, episode 685, just dedicated to this for you. There are three components. Which way do you think the market will go? Is it down, which would be a D? Is it neutral, which is just flatline, which would be an N? Or is it up, which would be a U? And then we use this down, neutral and up in terms of your portfolio and how you think that particular movement could impact your portfolio and how synchronized in with the market you feel. And you can just look at these little words here because they explain what that particular code means. Always remember that you control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return based on your active learning, your knowledge and your courage, and the market penalizes blame and gambling. I've been saying for a couple of days now that the longs were increasing in the market as the shorts were getting liquidated, and there was always the potential for a long liquidation. When we look at recent prices coming down pretty hard, we can see the longs were definitely set up. And we can also see that the shorts aren't really confident in the market either. They're actually decreasing the rate. And we've got a slight tick up on the longs. We wouldn't be at all surprised if we had a long spike of liquidations. And now it looks as though the shorts are starting to get hit. Well, let's check it out. Across the past 24 hours, there's been 114.16 million in liquidations across 49,141 positions. And when we look to total liquidations across the past 24 hours, let's say about 62% long. Past 12 hours, about 70% long. Past 4 hours, about 67% long. And the past hour, about 58% short. But what are we looking at in relative terms? Yes, definitely, the longs got more hit than the shorts, but it's not like something that we've seen recently with huge long liquidations. Mostly in the past, we had short liquidations. So we're not seeing a big spike up like this, for example, at the moment. The greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, Chain, Doge, AVAX, BNB, SHIB, OKB and EOS. And the greatest losers in the past 24 hours, TON, Clayton, USDC, Lunacy, Casper, Zek, and CRV. When looking at the top crypto projects, we can see Ethereum following Bitcoin's gravity. And we've seen BNB just put in some really, really interesting stuff just of late. And we'll just look into a quick few news headlines to try and determine what that could be. And we can see ADA just following in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. This is on the 30 minute. And we can see XRP starting to rock back and roll because it was very much under Bitcoin's gravity. And now it's starting to come back. Fantastic. Solana just following Bitcoin's gravity with some slight divergences. And Doge has been a just an animal it's just jumping those price fences everywhere. It went up to literally 150% up and now it's a mere 100% up. Well done, Doge. Let's have a look at DOT. DOT is following in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity, just coming down at the moment. And we can see Matic in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity as well. With Elon Musk taking over Twitter, Doge has been having a lot of fun. And we also know that CZ gave, well, not gave, but contributed $500 million, just a mere half a billion to Elon's takeover of Twitter. And Elon wants CZ to help him with blockchain. 
And the feeling's very mutual. Binance CEO says he wants to help Elon bring Twitter into Web3. And we saw a bit of movement in ADA as well. The first ever BSC to ADA Cardano bridge goes live. And we're getting more and more Metaverse trademarks. Superstar basketball player Stephen Curry has filed a trademark for Curryverse which indicates that Curry plans to offer virtual clothing, footwear, belts, headgear, sports bags, watches, artwork, and other items in the metaverse. In other news, Tether Bank Fraud Probe gets fresh look by Justice Department. And Tether responds to Bloomberg and says it's just recycling old news. We can see the news is a little bit negative today. Doge is doing well on the back that... Twitter subscriptions could be Doge enabled. How cool will that be? And also Dogecoin cashback now supported by UK's biggest fintech firm. One really interesting thing, as the big tech lays off workers, tech talent migrates to Web3. Apollo Global Management, through a partnership with digital asset platform, Anchorage Digital, in a major push by one of the world's largest asset managers is bringing crypto to institutional investors. You can see crypto is going through quite good adoption. But the Bitcoin miners have been having a little bit of trouble. Bitcoin mining firm Core Scientific stock plunges amid bankruptcy rumors. Argo blockchain is at risk of closing if it fails further financing. And Mark Zuckerberg's intends to pump $10 billion a year into the metaverse. Elon Musk <laughs> gets rid of the Twitter board and is named as sole director. He's just literally dissolved Twitter's nine-person board of directors to become the only director. There can be only one. And in more news of the line starting to blur between Main Street and Crypto Street, cryptocurrency exchange FTX announced in a teaser the start of its partnership with GameStop with the sale of FTX gift cards in retail stores. Blockchain firm Valerium gets approval to buy Gibraltar Exchange and turn it into a gateway to European capital for fledgling companies from the Middle East, India and Africa. And recently, Justin Sun took over Hubei and we talked about this a couple of episodes ago and we've seen HUSD depeg since that decision because Justin is promoting USDD. HUSD is down 60% in the last 24 hours. David Schwartz, Ripple CTO, defends XRP's sluggish price and says it's moving in sync with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's check out that assertion. We can see that Ripple, in fact, did a huge push, just a massive push up on very good news. And what has it done recently? Is it, in fact, merging with Bitcoin's gravity? Well, it is to a degree, absolutely. And it's a, just a little bit weaker just at the current stage. But that's to be expected because what we actually see when we get very, very big pushes up in price, we need digestion of those rallies. This is not necessarily a bad thing, not at all. And we will, in all likelihood, see Doge do a similar thing. As it skyrockets up, it'll get to a point when the sellers just come in and say, uh-uh, not anymore, as exactly what happened with XRP. And it can be profit-taking as well. And then it will just start to move sideways, just consolidating those gains. One of the things that happened with Ripple, in fact, it did incredibly well as Bitcoin was starting to turn around but then went lower. XRP just absolutely took off. That's something to be considered as well. All inverters need to resynchronize. Just keep that one in mind. It's really helpful. Going through the news headlines tends to give a lot of flavor to what price action is doing. But just be really careful. The news can create pumps and often create dumps. 
For example, many people were getting into Doge and buying it around the 150% up mark and then it went down to about 88% up. And I guess a lot of people would have seen that and said, oh no, it's just going to collapse back to zero. 0% up. So what we'll do is just get out here and then it started to pump again. This is crypto. It's really, really volatile. Looking through other top cryptos, we can see Tron starting to get above a level of resistance. Very early days, but it's certainly getting there. SHIB was in the shadow of Doge and doing really, really well because of that association. It reached up nearly 50% and came down quite a lot to about 16% up. Now it's starting to actually go up. So let's see how SHIB plays out. And UNI, just under Bitcoin's gravity, we can see AVAX starting to rock and roll. Well done AVAX. Litecoin, following Bitcoin's gravity, we can see some divergences inside LINK. Could be something to keep your eye on. And Adam starting to break away and over accentuate the positive upside of Bitcoin and under accentuate the negative down percentage moves. That's very, very interesting. Keep your eye on that. And FTT starting to also come up on the back heels of Binance coin coming up as well. So what you can see here is, is if, if Doge comes up, SHIB comes up. If SHIB comes up, Doge comes up. Just be aware of that and the exchanges, BNB and FTT. There's so many things to be aware of inside the crypto market. Quant was looking incredibly good, but we always know that when something takes off, it needs to digest its gains. So it can't literally continue on forever. And we've seen Quant come back but Quant has done incredibly well. Bear the longer term picture in mind. One thing to keep in your mind, the major indices will dictate, literally they have become dictators to crypto's fate. So if we see a major push up in the indexes, for example, the S&P 500, and we've seen big moves up and consolidation periods, big moves up and further up moves, big moves up, and retracements. So just bear this in mind. This is really healthy stuff. We're over one level of once resistance and now above support. We're above another level of support. It would be perfectly fine for the S&P 500 to come back and test this smart money buy zone between 38.12 and 37.7 T. So that concept should be in your mind. If it comes down and just test this zone and maintain support, we're still going up. And that actually increases the probability that we'll come up to retest this higher resistance line up here at around 41.30. So just be aware that there is some positive price momentum. There's some really good support below as well. Also, looking to the S&P 500 futures can be really, really helpful to do. It can give you an edge inside the market. One thing that we can see are the two-year yields. They're coming up to some very heavy smart money sell levels. Just bear that in mind. It's not going to be easy to get over that 4.542% mark. Yields are currently at 4.487%. This is the US two-year yields. The NASDAQ is still caught within a support and resistance bracket. And it has support at 10,974 and 10,986. It was on the last trading session, 10,988. We also saw in the past trading session that the fear gauge of the market found some support but it's in a massive downtrend. The VIX doesn't typically move this way. It's very spiky beast. It's all over the place, like a random teenager. But it's actingly acting more middle aged at the moment. Come on, VIX, spark up what you're doing. When we look at fear coming out of the market, we expect prices to go up and we saw some positive momentum, but actually we saw the dollar rally up, yields come up, Bond prices come down, gold come down, oil come down, and junk bonds come down as well. That threw some negative price momentum inside the major indexes.
with of course a bit of an offset in terms of oil coming down because of inflationary pressures. But I'm still waiting to see at the gas pump these prices to come down. My goodness! Unfortunately we can see the 5 year and 10 year break even inflation rate continue to go up. This is problematic because the probability of a 75 basis point increase is more and more on the cards. People are thinking that a 50 basis point increase, yeah that'll do it. I don't think so. And the market doesn't think so either. When we look at the federal funds rate prediction of April 2023, we can see that yields are starting to recover. They're coming back up. Is this arcing over and coming down? It's very early to tell but we've seen some very good recovery in the yield prediction. And Masterclass students you received this live chart in LV24. One thing to keep in mind when we look at the 9 sell-offs and recoveries in the S&P 500 since 1966 mapped to the current price, what we're actually seeing is a testing of that upper resistance line back here in June. This is really really healthy. Yes it did in fact back off that previous resistance but it's still a very very healthy sign. If we saw price not being able to get above this first level of resistance and not being able to get above this second level of resistance back here in June, the current price we're seeing is behaving really really well. And we know from rule 4 price moves in waves. It can't go straight up and it can't go straight down. It's always going up and down and up and down and up and down. And when it's coming down it's always going up and down at the same time. This is what traders make a living from. These up and down volatility movements are very very profitable. The major thing to do, don't put yourself in a particular position of only having one concept. Always say the markets can go down, they can go neutral or they can go up. Consider your risk management. If they go down or neutral what are you going to do with your portfolio? If they go up well that's pretty cool because most people are long. So if, they, if price goes up that's a kind of a nice thing. But if it goes down you need to know what you will do and only you can answer that question. Nobody else can answer it for you. I thought something good to talk about in the comments today. Zone 1 and Zone 2 is retail thinking. Zone 3 and Zone 4 is professional thinking, smart money thinking, institutional thinking. How is the best path or how have you found to move out of retail thinking into smart money thinking? Because that's a really good thing to talk about. Even if you're not there yet, if you're still stuck in the retail mode of thinking. And that's really to be understood because most influencers out there are retail thinkers. And you can see that pretty easily by the amount of emotional content, the screaming faces, the skulls, the explosions that goes into thumbnails. Getting out of zone 1 and zone 2 into zone 3 and zone 4 is the path to profitability. I'm really looking forward to your thoughts and ideas. It's really important to prime our mind for profitability in the crypto market. To do that we have the CTKS Creed. These are just a series of positive affirmations, positive statements that you say to yourself. They will help your mind to think positively and opportunistically about opportunities that exist in the markets and in life. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. Saying the CTKS Creed definitely primes your mind for profitability in not just life but in the crypto market as well. And I'd like to thank everybody again for your very kind comments. And it's so incredibly important to keep on doing your Borsog codes each and every day. The market will actually reward you for doing so. In zone 1 and zone 2 it's all about being right or wrong. Zone 3 and zone 4 it's all about probabilities. Well done to everybody who puts in your Borsog codes. Each and every day you'll find that you'll get more and more synchronized. 
And these codes are very time dependent as well, but it's all about your active learning. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.